Greetings, beloved brothers of Cap Alpha Psi. I am delighted to be here with you, and I speak to my brothers with great pride and great humility. H.G. Wells once characterized civilization as a race between education and catastrophe. Now, if H.G. Wells had known that we would understand in this nation, given the rotation of the earth, that we'd be able to fire a rocket through a six second window and place a man in orbit and then the moon. Surely H.G. Wells would have concluded that here at least education as the edge. Yet, in this technologically proficient nation, it seems that a lot of change has taken place. But the more the change, it seems that it remains the same in our great country. But we are prepared, brothers, to assume a much needed leadership role. Those Ten great men at Indiana University in 1911 set out a mandate for Kappa Alpha Psi that we must be the brothers who are achieving in every field of endeavor. That was their commitment, and by the virtue of the fact that you are members of Kappa Alpha Psi, it is your commitment. Let me set the stage here with a little story that I think is, is uh, apropos. There was a young man walking down a very lonely road when he sighted a bird. This bird was almost expired from the weather. He picked the bird up and cupped it in his hands and as the bird became warmer, he could feel a heartbeat. And about that time, a herd of cattle crossed the road and obliged the young man by leaving a large residue. The young man put the bird in the residue, covered him up to its neck, and as the bird became warm and warmer, he started singing louder and louder. A passing wolf heard the bird's song and ate it. Now there's several morals to that story. Number one, it's not always your enemy who put you in it. And it's certainly not always your friend who take you out of it. And if you're in it up to your neck, you are not to be singing about it. And there are those in America today that think that we're in it up to our necks. But the good news is those brothers at Indiana University in 1911 got it right. Their commitment and our commitment is just what's needed right now. We need to be present in our communities, in our brotherhood, to help America towards being America and not someplace else. The more things change, the more they seem to remain the same. Now let me give you a good example. By the grace of God, I have been able to document a number of firsts in this our America. For instance, I was the first black to be commanding officer of the largest naval aviation training squadron in the U.S. Then I was the first black to become commanding officer of a naval air station in continental U.S., right there at Corpus Christi, Texas. Next, I was the first senior captain to become commodore of a naval air training wing, training air wing four, right there in Corpus Christi, Texas. But on top, the top of all of this, I was the first inspector general at the state level in this country and became the first inspector general and governor of Bob Graham's office in the state of Florida. 
on his personal staff. And in that role, one night, a staff member came by my house and said that the governor wanted us to proceed to Miami immediately. As we got to the airport and got on the state jet, in a very short time, we were approaching Miami, Florida. And we could see the flames, multiple flames burning in Liberty City burning in the heart of Miami's black neighborhood. What is this? Why? The police had beat a young black insurance executive to death who was riding a motorcycle rather carelessly through Miami. In the preceding months from that incident, the police officers who were involved in that tragedy their trial was transferred to Tampa so that they could receive justice. And you guessed it. On the day before the fires, justice was rendered in Tampa that the officers acted within their jurisdiction doing their duty, which resulted in the death of another black man. And so there were the fires. But I tell you what, as we got down there amid the fires, the gunshots and the rock throwing and the police cars racing all over, there were some other brothers out there trying to make a difference, <laughs> living up to the commitment. The commitment made at Indiana University in 1911. And there was Brother John Conyers and Brother Daniel Chappie James, who's influenced still resonates in that area. The more things change, the more they seem to remain the same. Michael Brown, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, to get our attention that there are things that we must do, that we must continue to honor our legacy. Well, I tell you, in no uncertain terms that we are in a absolute perfect position to provide for this, for our brotherhood and for this nation, the leadership that's needed. There's an old Chinese proverb that says that one's footprints is the best fertilizer for one's garden. So there it is. There's our mandate. To go forward. Now, every time I've tried to solve some leadership problem or been involved, even in the White House, where I worked on the President's Management Improvement Council, we, we want to make things better, but there's so many things we don't know what to grasp. So today, let me grasp two things. Police community relationships and the rights and responsibilities of our young brothers, our undergraduate brothers on the campuses throughout this country. First, the police. After the riots in Miami, I spent three years as a certified law enforcement instructor at the State Police Academy, uh, the State Highway Patrol Academy, and I would say one of the foolish things that I would even gather to would be defund the police. As a matter of fact, I know some folk where places where I live would tell you that we need more police. If there's a problem with the police force, and we all know that there are some problems, then we need to be problem solvers. Defunding the police is madness. What are you going to do? You fund some of them? Let the, less, the rest of them run wild? If that be the case? No, nah, we can't do that. And I will tell you, as a law enforcement certified in Florida, the instructions in the police academy and the state troopers academy, none finer. Of course, as time goes by with technology improvements and cultural influence and knowledge 
there could be some changes and must be some changes, but we need to identify those changes, not talk about defunding the police. That's not the approach that we need at all. And if you think for one minute, because I'm moving on now to the rights and responsibilities of our brothers on campus, because that's been a sore spot with me for a long time. You know, as a 16 year old, I say, I had no idea of leadership till I looked up and found some campus. Then I knew where I belonged. But when I got to Kentucky State at 16 years old, I didn't have one dollar in my pocket. So in this day, in this environment, I could not be a capital. Let me say to you that we have a lot to do. Because the more things change, the more things seem to remain the same. I'd like to end this discussion with a story that I have inherited from some just outstanding black folk. Some years ago, I attended a Congressional Black Caucus dinner and on stage came one Roscoe Lee Brown and they were doing a thing called the Advocates Among Us. And on to that stage that night came this humble but strong lady, Fannie Lou Hamer, who was at the time struggling with cancer. But she stood there in all her glory while Roscoe Lee Brown told her favorite story that I'll share with you right now. This is kind of my favorite story. There was in a village a very wise man who continually frustrated the children because he knew all the answers. You know, like when you guys call us old heads <laughs> and you the you, you young heads. So some of them contrived one day to find this wild man liking. So one guy says, I know, I'll catch a bird and I, I put it in my hands behind my back. And we'll ask the wise man, what is, I ha is it I have in my hand behind my back? And surely he'll say, a bird. And I'll say, is it alive or dead? And he'll, if he says dead, I'll open my hand and let it fly away. If he says alive, I'll crush it. So they caught a bird and they went to see the wise man. Said, oh, wise man, oh, wise man, what is it I have in my hand behind my back? And the wise man hesitated. And he said, son, it's all in your hand. And I tell you, brothers, it's all in our hands. And let us live out our lives in the heat of years to die still drunken with a dreamer's wine. May God bless you.